In the spring and early summer of 2023, Animal Justice received an anonymous tip about train and trial areas holding events in Ontario. Not many Canadians have heard of these facilities, and the truth is, neither had I. So I started looking into it and learned that these train and trial areas are parcels of fenced off land that are stocked with captive coyotes, foxes, or other animals. It seemed to be that hobbyists from the region travel to these facilities to compete in contests, where they send their dogs into pens to chase, terrorize, and maybe even catch and maul captive animals with no way to escape. This sounded too extreme to be true, so I went undercover and visited some of these events to see them firsthand. The government says no animals are killed in these pens, but folks on the ground tell a different story. Dogs catch them all through the year, and uh, once they get after them, they smoke their ass. I was shocked not only to learn that some of the worst stories are true, but that the Ontario government is looking to expand it. I attended a few of these train and trial events at a 600 acre coyote pen just outside of Kingston, Ontario. The events start early in the morning, often before dawn. The cries of the dogs could be heard from far up the road as they pulled into the pen. When I arrived, they found dozens of dogs being held in cages, barking and yelping as owners prepared for the contest. Each dog had a number written on their torso, so they could be identified by the judges. The contestants waited in a clubhouse while the judges and hosts gathered to coordinate their lookout spots. At 6 a.m., a whistle blew and the hounds were released. The dogs erupted into a nightmarish chorus of barking and howling as they began their stampede into the woods. I was sent with a veteran contestant to assist with judging the event. So we'll we'll kind of head off that way there. It's a cool. pretty good spot. So are you judging or are you what's what's? Yeah, well we're gonna judge together. Okay. That way or that way? This is one good spot here where they'll be blowing through. It's the judge's responsibility to watch for what they call crossings, moments where dogs are spotted actively chasing coyotes. I saw these crossings regularly and could see the terrified look on the coyotes' faces as they tried their best to evade the dogs. Many times, the coyotes would be followed by packs of a dozen or more dogs at a time. 48, dogs are judged on their ability to chase the coyotes or foxes, and winners receive cash prizes, trophies, or outdoor equipment. Last year, right? So I think I, the one bitch must have got me 3,000 bucks. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah. So that all adds up, and I've won about five... Five coolers. Nice. Already. Yeah, you know, and them, them fucking Yeti coolers are. They go for some money. Box or so. Because there's money in it, these contestants are willing to pay for a dog who can win. Yeah, where do where do y'all find your dogs typically? Like, where is, is oh, it's it? quite a network. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. How much do they uh, they go for typically? Yeah, you know, some of them two thousand. Yeah. Some five hundred. Listen to this participant talk about a friendly young dog who is sniffing us. I wish this dog would fuck off. The game comes down through and spots him standing around the brainless prick. Get Something like this, you could probably get it for nothing. It'd be good in a home with some kids maybe, but... He'd <laughs> <laughs> be fucking better in a hole. See this fucking thing right here, he should be hit on top of the fucking thing too. But I'm, uh, I'm really... <laughs> critical. Yeah. Okay. Because if it, if you're gonna win, you gotta be critical. Yeah. You, know, you really gotta call hard. Some of these guys will keep the same dogs for years and never collect an envelope. Old's too old for them. Like how long do they go usually? I don't. As a rule, I won't keep stuff much over four years. When the hunt is finished, the dogs are called back to the clubhouse with electric shock collars. How do they uh, end up wrangling all the dogs back? Well, they all got GPS collars on them. So you just track them down? Yeah, you either track them down and catch them, or else you just push the tone button and buzzes the collar. Uh, because most of them knows that <clears throat> if the tone button don't work, the next button over, that's the one that gets their attention. Right. With the hounds no longer in pursuit, coyotes who manage to outrun the dogs can finally rest. At least until the next hunt. And how many do they do throughout the year, usually? Um, oh, fuck. Every, every week. Oh, probably. really? Huh. Yeah. But what happens to coyotes who can't outrun the dogs? 
In public debates about the issue, the narrative pushed by pen owners and lobbyists has been that coyotes and dogs are never harmed in these pens. But participants I spoke with told a different story. How does it work with the coyotes? Do they, are they just in here and then they build a fence around and keep the population high, or do they no, bring them they, in? Or? They stock them. Gotcha. No, because they, you know, they lose them. Yeah. They, you know, yeah. dogs catch them all through the year. Yeah. They do a lot of shooting down here. Gotcha. But up our way, we're more into the farm country. Mm -hmm. We uh, we catch a lot of them. You know, lots of open ground, so uh, your dogs, if you've got fast hounds, you can catch them. Yeah. You know, we, Not as much cover. Get, yeah, that's right. And uh, once they get after them, they can smoke their ass. But even if coyotes weren't caught and mauled in these pens, the whole pretext for the events is that the dogs are trained to hunt and kill coyotes in the wild. Is that something we're supposed to be okay with? Listen to this participant brag about his dogs fighting a wolf. I thought we got wolf on wolf. And him and caught a nice fucking big animal. And we'll come by me about here to that tree and one dog on each side of it fighting with it. But then fucking that fucking thing was that much taller than them two dogs. Was um, he doing, was that wolf fucking... Doing? He didn't want to run. He, oh. he, but he had, you can see where he had a hold out, his fucking head, puncture marks on each side. Oh. Yeah, that's right, hold his fucking head. <laughs> oh, they're, they're mean fucking. I'm trying to figure out between me and him, I think we killed over 120 this year. Well, we killed 18 in one day of the coyote contest. Yeah. He, he killed 10, I killed 8. I started to realize that with pens this large and a practice so widespread, it wouldn't be possible to document everything that happens. So I started digging into train and trial Facebook groups and was shocked to see how candid they were. They shared graphic photos of their dogs' injuries. They advertised hard fighting dogs for sale who, quote, hate coyotes and have the faces to prove it. And one hunter even posted a photo of himself smiling while standing on a coyote's head. They clearly know what they do looks bad, and have frank conversations about what they should and shouldn't be posting in their public groups. The source also sent us these videos, allegedly from local dog hunters. Here, we see a hunter egging his dog along as they maul a dying coyote. Get him, you dogs. Get him. Get him, bigger. Get him. Get him, get him, get him, digger, get him, digger, get him, digger, get him. Good dogs. Pen owners and hunting Good lobbyists dogs. know the public would not be on their side if they saw this. And they've dealt with it before. This so-called sport was set to be phased out after a 1997 bill made it illegal to open any new pens. Existing pens could continue to operate, but licenses were non-transferable, which meant that it slowly closed as license holders sold their properties or passed away. Though one of the hunters I spoke with did accuse some pen owners of skirting the rules. Yeah, and what are the rules around this now? Because I know we're saying that it's it is banned, but like if you have an existing pen, you're good, right? Yeah. yeah. You can't open a new one. Yeah. I mean, the odd guy has snuck one in, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh, especially, and you're supposed to relicense again, and then some of these guys are buying the old existing ones down here and just carry them on. But while I was in the field, one of the participants shared some news that wasn't yet public. Well, if they open up this new pen law, it'll be a lot different. She's going to change the fucking world a bit for fucking for us guys in Western Ontario. Yeah. Because we're going to get a fucking pen open up where we can actually fucking run and don't have to drive five hours. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Is there talk of the rules changing so that people can yeah, open a pen? To, yeah, it's in the legislation yeah. this week. Oh, wow, okay. Huh. I didn't hear how it went, but yeah, it was in the legislation at the end of the month here. I know a guy who was just going to build one of his fucking rules. Ontario's Conservative government, headed by Doug Ford, introduced a bill that would reverse the decades-long ban on opening new coyote pens in the province, making Ontario the only province in Canada where this is allowed. Animal Justice aggressively fought this bill, and our supporters rose to the occasion, submitting letters expressing their outrage during the comment period, and writing to their MPPs to warn them not to let the bill pass. But with a conservative majority parliament dead set on deregulation, there was no chance of success, and the bill passed in June this year. Animal Justice is not giving up the fight against this extreme blood sport. Canned hunting is not fair chase. There is no cultural tradition to protect. 
The only reason these so-called hunters get away with this cruelty is because most people don't know that it happens. We still have a chance to prevent this from getting worse. The fight is not over. Join us in demanding the Ontario government cancel their plans and end captive dog hunting at animaljustice.ca slash dogpens. And please help us spread awareness of this brutal blood sport by sharing this video with your friends and family.